Welcome. Today is Wednesday and we are in the second week of the Lenten season. And really, we can look at the readings and the whole day from this point of view. You know, in a musical symphony, there are moments when in the midst of one movement or theme, a hint of the next theme is given. So such is today's Lenten Mass. Four weeks before Spy Wednesday, the lesson is the coming suffering and also the death of Christ. That theme will dominate the latter part of the Lenten season. But today we'll hear um, a segment of that theme as we listen carefully um, to the readings for today. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Father, teach us to live good lives, couraging, courageously and lovingly. Give us the support that we need to bring us to eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So today we're looking at the Gospel. It's chapter 20, verses 17 to 28. And the Gospel reading on this day for many centuries is one of the finest in Lent. It points towards Jerusalem and the suffering ahead and teaches a helpful lesson on humility. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, Wishing to ask him for something, he said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink but to sit at my right and my left, that is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. So what we find today is that Jesus warns the sons of Zebedee that their desire to be leaders was not fully informed. They didn't realize that people at the top often suffer very words mistaking magnificent and publicized and wonderful gifts that might be theirs. In other words, maybe they were a bit prideful. And all James and John saw was the glory of being at the top with their teacher. So Jesus urges them to aim instead for service. Our culture worships leadership too. And can we let go of our need to be in power and um, admire at the, f the front of the, of the room as those who are very successful? Can we follow Jesus' lead and look for opportunities to serve and to love? That's really what the season is all about. And yet Zebedee's sons are two individuals who are really seeking the place of honor. They want to be next to Jesus. They want to be sitting on those nice thrones looking maybe wise, but um, <laughs> certainly not very humble. And mm. I think that that's maybe all of us. Sometimes we have to realize that God's calling us to be a little bit more on the humble side so he can bless us. 
And he can have a closer relationship with us. Sure, because we can become more open. Yeah, the, the message our Holy Father keeps giving to us is humility, humility. And he leads with that message, which is marvelous. You know, and, and some of us, we, we think we're humble, but not way down deep in our hearts. I think we need to work on that. And like I've heard many great priests say, you know, I'm just a servant of the servants of God. And we need to look at ourselves and say, how are we being of service and servants, not wanting the first pew at, in our parishes, but giving that first pew to somebody else and inviting people. In many of our parishes, people are standing. Well, we invite them to come and sit. That's just, you know, it's a small gesture, but it's the beginning to bring people towards the Lord and making sure that everyone has their place in our parish community. And I think that um, the Holy Father is continually seeking after that reality uh, by what he says. And so many people uh, become upset at what he says, but really when you look at what he says, he's actually uh, putting into context what the Lord himself had said. So we find it uh, being put in context in just about every country um, because it's going to be put into context just a little differently. And yet, it's what people of that area need to hear. And uh, so, Zebedee's sons are two individuals who really want the glory, but they are not necessarily ready for the suffering. And, and yet, they will suffer just like Jesus, uh, because Jesus says to them right in Scripture um, that that's going to be the road that you're on. And sometimes the simplest suffering that we can involve ourselves in and oftentimes will reject is um, moving uh, from pride to humility. And that oftentimes is some of the toughest moves that people have to make. It certainly is. We have two other really wonderful examples. St. John Mary Vianney, a very humble priest who was a vessel of God in this world. And Father, I had Brother Andre Bessette. Yes, also from Canada. From the, from the Oratory of St. Joseph. They were very humble people. St. Brother Andre was the doorkeeper. Yes, and it's kind of interesting. We know when you read the story about him, um, you find that many times when he's just driving by the car, in the car, driving by an individual and looks at them and in many, in some cases, there were, was immediate healing in his hand gesture as she reached out to them, kind of like saying, I'm praying for you. Yes. And it's amazing. And, and yet, um, we don't think that we have uh, that ability. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that really, that ability takes real humility because we cannot move into pride if the Lord himself is doing healing for others. We have to be humble because it's not we that does the healing, it's the Lord himself. Right. And Andre was a wonderful example of that reality, wonderful. And the Lenten season draws us, listening to the scriptures today, to humility. So moving away from pride and moving into deeper humility is important for all of us so that we become open to the Lord who wants to become part of our life. And he wants to do this in a special way, um, not uh, prideful, that we then block his grace and to block his entrance, but really being humble, we allow him in because in ultimate reality we are saying, Lord, I need you. Come back tomorrow and we'll share some more. Bye-bye.